wealth. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give today. Good morning. morning. Welcome to our 8 a.m. service. We're going through, we're going to start a series called Jesus Period. And the reason why we entitled this Jesus Period is because early on, during when Victory Church was still young, um, it was a new belt in Makati. It hasn't spread over the Philippines yet. Uh, It has become a slogan. There was a big tarpaulin in the center of victory, in the side, and it just says Jesus period. It was always a reminder to our pastors, to the members who attended there, that it's not about the victory brand. It's about the honor, honoring and glorifying the name Jesus. And so in light of celebrating our 40 years, yung victory conference na announced si Pastor Brandel, 40 years na po tayo, praise God for this. Thank God, praise God for this. And I'm thankful to this church that the Lord has used this church to help us grow in our walk with God. And it would be a good celebration on June. I want 8 a.m. people to register early so you'll have good seats in Moa Arena and to celebrate God's goodness. So in light of the 40 years, we'll be using some slogans that the early victory used to remind themselves that of the core values, of the important things that really mattered as a church. And this one, Jesus, is all that matters to us. And, you know, talking about Bishop Ferdy, I'm sure you've noticed him lately. He has, he attended the 8 a.m. service, and it's really a big loss to our movement. Um, It was sudden, it was shocking, and I know some of you wanted to pay respects and honor this man. And in light of that, we're going to have a memorial service this Wednesday. All right. Um, It would be here in the EN building. Wednesday is a holiday and it would be 6 p.m. here. It will be held here. And today, while I'm preaching now, is the interment. Okay. In Nueva Ecija. So some of our pastors and senior pastors are there now. And, but so this Wednesday, we'll just have a memorial service to celebrate his life. And it's a big loss to us. Um, you know, you noticed him come by and some of you leaders had a picture with him um, just a few weeks ago. And, and so even me, I'm still grieving and I'm still processing it. Um, I have lots of questions to God, but I trust God that he, he knows what he's doing and God has a will for him. His will is sometimes can't be explained, but I just have to trust him that God's heart is always um, loving kindness towards his people, right? So um, yeah, so this coming Wednesday, can we just bow down our heads and pray? I I want us to pray for the family. We pray for peace and comfort to be upon Judy, El, Ian, John, Philip, Lord, and the grandchildren. Even pray for all those people here in this church who have been um, touched, been blessed by the life of Bishop Ferdy, Lord. He, he was a blessing. He was a, a pillar here in this movement. But I pray, Lord, that in the midst of all this, that you would give us peace and comfort. Thank you for his life. Thank you, Lord, that he's now in heaven with you. No more suffering and enjoying your presence, Lord. So I pray, God, that even for those of us who are left here, especially the family, pray for your peace and comfort the next coming weeks and months, Lord, as we are grieving, Lord. And thank you, God, that um, you, have, you still have great plans for them and their, for their family, even for this church. And so we release him. Lord, we, even though there are a lot of questions, we are at peace 
we choose to be joyful and to be at peace, knowing that all things work together for the good of those who love Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so how do I start with the sermon after announcing that, right? The question that I want to ask us to discuss the first week of this series is, how will you know if you're growing as a Christian? When you look at the Bible, are there barometers or things to gauge to be able to find out if you're growing as a follower and as a disciple of Jesus? Growth is required. Say that to the person beside you. Parang medyo galing sa ilang growth is required. Oh my gosh, it's hard. But if you're a believer and a Christian, God expects that you and me, we ought to grow. We're not like a bonsai tree. It's beautiful outside, but it's limited in height. I can relate to that. Three weeks ago, I went, we, my wife and I and the family were privileged to be able to visit Tokyo, Japan. It's cold. It's cold. Uh, so first day, we had a courtesy call first with the emperor. And the second day, the prime minister. And then, so ganun lang, yung routine namin. Um, but then, we, that, that date, we were supposed to, during those, those dates, ano nga ba tayo umalis, love, March 20 to 27, it's usually the cherry blossom tree that's blooming. Unfortunately, when we went there, and that whole week, we did not see any. Okay, we saw a few. Grabe naman, kunyari, let's say two or three blo- cherry blossom. All the tourists flocked there. So how can I post a picture. So what happened though, during the our stay, a, an article was released somewhere in social media that the cherry blossom will be delayed this year because of the cold weather. Instead, it will be like the week after, but that week after we're already here. But the preparation of that tree is that it's, it's, the leaves are falling. Okay, there are no leaves before the cherry blossom blooms. The trees are there, but there are no leaves. So when we were walking in the garden, one of the gardens there, we were walking, we, we saw all those trees, but there are no leaves. Yet. Now when you look at it, it looks dead. But it's not. Because the week after, all the cherry blossom leaves will bloom. I think about that picture, because if you're a follower of Christ... Are you blooming? Naku po, yan ang mahirap na tanong. Okay, usually it's a compliment for women and sometimes to men. Uy, blooming ka. Diba? How many of you here, you've received that compliment already? Uy, sis, blooming ka. G- blooming or glooming? Okay, that's a different one. But if you're a Christian and if you have Jesus in your life, bearing fruit... Blooming, or whatever the similar words equivalent to that, it's expected. It's highly expected. Now the question is, Pastor, what if I'm not growing? What if I've been a Christian for 25 years, but I haven't grown? What do you do? What if a Christian who has lived this lifetime has not grown spiritually? Oh, you don't want me to get there. It will be a debate between me and Pastor Brandel. But Jesus speaks, shares a picture that if a tree does not bear fruit, it is thrown to the fire. So if you really are a follower of Christ, growth is inevitable. Growth is highly expected of you. Growth is required. And that's what we're going to talk about today with a smile. Because it's a reminder to me and to us, 8 a.m. family, that if you're following Jesus and if you've decided to follow Christ, you ought to grow in Him. All right, let's look at Colossians. That's the focus book of this series when you talk about Jesus' period. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, there's a church in, a, in Colossae 
that was established, not by Paul, they say, it's established by one of the disciples of Paul. It's near Ephesus, Ephesian. It's neighbor, it's a neighboring city. And Paul heard about it. See, Apostle Paul heard about this church that was growing in Colossae. And then he writes a letter or emails them and then encourages them to keep on following Jesus. And then he mentions and itemized prayer items. Okay? He itemized each prayer item for them. Ang pinagpe-pray ni Paul, the following items. That were, but that's what we're going to discuss today. The prayer items of Paul for the church in Colossae. And from the prayer items, we'll see a barometer and a gauge how we are doing as a Christian. It gives you a clue how to measure and assess yourself if you're growing as a Christian. Let's look at that. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, sabi ni Apostle Paul, And so, from the day we heard about your faith, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be, what? One, two, three. Filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. It's, it's amazing that in, when you look at church history during the time of Paul, parang umuusbong na lang yung church. Pastor Brandel, during the welcome and announcement, announced it that we're going to have another service. When is it? June. 4 p.m. Sunday. And I, I know it doesn't apply to you because all of us are disciplined people. We wake up early. Okay, wake up the person that's sleeping now. Discipline ka daw. No, I'm just joking. Of course, just in case you drop by in the Sunday afternoon, there's another service by June. So we announce it. We planned for it. We strategized for it. Uh, a congregation somewhere in BGC, we planned it. We announced it. We strategized it. So, but it's very different in the past because during the time of Paul, Paul gets shocked from time to time because there's just a church that suddenly gets established. It's not like all the churches during back then were planted by him. There were some that just miraculously, oh, Christians pala dun. And they started to have a church. And so Paul is just like that. He was shocked, amazed, thankful to God that there's a church that was planted in Colossae. And when he heard about it, he said, this is the first prayer item. He said that she will be filled with what? Spiritual wisdom and so how will you know if you're growing as a Christian? That's a good clue. I'm not wasting my words here because I just received a comment from my wife. The reason why my sermon takes long because I waste words. So I need to be economical with my words and efficient. Especially when she's listening. So the first clue, the first gauge for you to be able to find out if I am growing as a Christian is this. Are you increasing in wisdom and? Are you? Yung mga iba? Kind of semi. Wisdom is the ability to know what's right. And the ability to do what's right. When you do a context word study of wisdom from Genesis to Revelation, you will discover wisdom is not intelligence. How many intelligent people we have here? Come on, man, raise your hands. Bra bragging aside. Okay, just being honest. Okay, unfortunately, wala. So 8 a.m. is not that intelligent, I guess. Wisdom is not about having the highest IQ. Although... It's a blessing to have high IQ. Right, Tim? Why are you here? But wisdom is to be able to think and feel and know what's right in the eyes of God. How many of you know we can twist what's right today? The world can dictate and determine what's right. But to know and understand what's right according to the Scriptures and the ability to do it. So wisdom is both knowing and doing. That's why fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when I fear God, I act in light of fearing God, 
That is wisdom. So wisdom is not just stock knowledge. You can attend seminary like me, but if there's no action involved, it's not wisdom. It's foolishness. So when you study wisdom, simply lang, it's the ability to know what's right and the ability to do what's right, that's wisdom. So if you're a believer and a follower of Jesus, do you have that ability? When you go to your office or later, Bell, you'll work. Tomorrow, some, a lot of us will go to work. A lot of us will go to school. Do we have the ability to know what's right and do what's right? That's wisdom. So to know if you're growing as a Christian is that ability growing. Kaya nga po, pag define mo po yung wisdom, it's a skill. <laughs> it's ability. So now, if I know God's Word and I understand God's Word, how does that translate in the way I act in the office? How does that translate in the way I treat my wife? Oops. How does that translate in my parenting? How does that translate in the way I handle finances? That how does that translate in the way I deal and handle business transactions? How does that translate in managing my staff? How does that translate when I drive? How does that <laughs> sinama ko na? How does that translate in the way I go and bring, do about my social activities during the week? How does that translate? And when you look at understanding, it's it's interesting to see the definition of understanding. Understanding is clarity. It's like an analogy of running together. I'm able to piece, to piece it together. How many, how many of you here know what I'm talking about? That after listening to a sermon, okay, it's the pastor's fault probably. But when you hear the sermon, after kayong mag-asawa or the person, you're ta- your friend, after the service, you said, ano daw? How many of you here, you've attended, not, I hope not 8 a.m., You've attended a service and after all the highfalutin terms, ano ba yung mga highfalutin? Ikaw. <laughs> I'm sure I'm also guilty. Soteriology, pneumatology, lahat, di ba? Propitiation, imputation. Hindi amputation, imputation. And then after all the deep words that you hear from the pastor and then you go out going down the escalator or maybe in the basement parking, you said, so, ano? An- anong point niya? You know what? <laughs> you know what? How, how many of you can name the past? No, no, I'm just joking. I'm not able to piece it together. You know what I'm talking about? It's like when I get to, oh nga, ang lalim nga. When I open the scripture, oh wow, what a discovery. But I'm not able to piece it together pertaining the way I apply it in my life. But Paul is saying, understanding or discernment is able to apply and piece it together so that I know how will it work in my life. Claro? I hope after the service, sabi, ano daw? Sabi ni Pipat. <laughs> but if you're growing as a follower of Christ, wisdom and understanding should increase. We phased out. Every time we give our tithes and offering, if you notice, pre-pandemic era, the envelopes are on your seats. When I was in the 6 and 8, can you imagine the thickness of the envelopes that I get to read each and every week and pray for? Okay, thank God now it's online, so it has lessened. But I still get to read the prayer requests that you write from time to time. And now, because it's mixed, eh, no? Parang, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's mixed or it's a super service. But I don't, don't get to receive it. So when I get to pray for the prayer requests from time to time, you know the majority prayer requests? I can already categorize it in five items, in prayer requests nyo. Nyo. But one major, every week, walang paltos, Always included in the envelope is what? Wisdom and understanding. 
It's how to discern God's will. It's always like that. And I'm not saying it's bad because I can relate to that. When we're about to make a financial decision, is it God's will? When we're about to do something important for the family, the question is always, is it God's will? But you know, when Paul said this, that when you're growing as a Christian, the ability to have that wisdom and understanding to know God's will is important and it should increase. What's the purpose? So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. The result is when I have this ability of wisdom and understanding, I, I can live a life that pleases God. How many of you here, you don't have to raise your hands, just nod or wink at me. How many of you here can relate or have been guilty, diba? Right? You, you were not pursuing the will of God. You were pursuing your own will. And what happens next? You face a consequence. You know what the world teaches, right? Follow your heart. Just do whatever that makes you happy. But that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is not telling us to do whatever makes us happy. The Bible is telling us to do the Lord's will. Yun yung sinasabi ni Rich kanina, di ba? What if doing the Lord's will will cause you to lose some things? I see Brandel pala. What if doing the Lord... Nene, I count it as rubbish. I remember. I, I remember all the things that happened here. I take note. <laughs> So, ibig sabihin, yung I count them as rubbish. Kasi what if doing the Lord's will will cause you to give up some things? The world is teaching, ay hindi. Keep the things. Even if it's simple or sinful, basta happy ka, keep it. That's a wrong teaching. That's why it requires wisdom and understanding. Because when I live in wisdom and understanding, the result is I live a life that's pleasing to God. That's my hope for us. Seriously, as your pastor, and I'm speaking to myself to 8 a.m. family, I want us to grow in our walk with God. That each and every day we get to please Him, to honor Him in everything we do. And that's what it means to have wisdom and understanding. That's the, re- the purpose of wisdom and understanding. Hindi yung parang pakita mo, oh, iba talaga kang may Christians. <laughs> ano ka kasi? Pagan ka kasi. That's what, <laughs> low intelligent. <laughs> Foolishness. No, I'm not saying that. It's not about superiority or putting down others. At the end of the day, because I want to please God. Because at the end of the day, just like what the series title is saying, it's all about Jesus, period. And then I highlighted it. The next one is what? One, two, three. Bearing in every. So how would I know if I'm growing as a Christian? Wisdom and understanding. I get to know what, what's God, what God's will is through His Word. I get to apply it in my life. And then the second one is to bear fruit in every good work. To bear fruit, ah, Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Peace, patience, love, kindness, joy, gentleness, self-control, and all these things, right? But if you have this character, it leads to action. Kaya bearing fruit in every good work. Last Sunday, it's so vivid for me, my brother Dendu, share the testimony of his life in our Ascot congregation last Sunday. It was Resurrection Sunday. And then he shared to the congregation there that when he surrendered his life to Christ, two things disappeared. Fast, immediately. One is his addiction to alcohol. He was a stockholder of many... Wineries there. Not so many wine. That wine store, he spends a lot, spends a lot of time also, not just money, but also time, just drinking and getting drunk. 
He was addicted to alcohol. He cannot sleep at night not drinking alcohol. Hmm. But you know, drunkenness is a sin, right? But when he surrendered his life to Christ, it bore fruit. The addiction miraculously disappeared. Coffee na lang kami ngayon now. But then he also said something that one of the bearing fruit in his, in the, in his area that when he bore fruit is that what? The bad words. It disappeared. Hindi mo Sabi niya, in his testimony last week, every time, every sentence, there's P.I. Ano, Philippine Islands? Before and after the sentence, there's cussing. When he was not a Christian. But when he encountered Jesus, two things, very obvious, disappeared. The bad words. Cussing, constant cursing, and then the addiction to alcoholism or alcohol. Bear fruit in every good work. Now, tanungin mo sarili mo ngayon habang nagsasalita ako. Ask yourself while I'm preaching now. What is that area in my life that I feel I have? There's, bear, there's fruit. One businessman who got discipled as well was telling me, Pastor, when I wasn't a Christian, it's not about bragging, ano, and comparing, oh, ano, fruit mo. <laughs> Wala kang pagbabago. You know, I'm not saying that when you compare. Their job is not to compare ourselves with one another, right? Christian ka ba talaga? Tingnan mo ako. Holy. <laughs> Ikaw, sinful. <laughs> I'm not saying that. We're not about comparing and competing. It's really just about knowing, Lord, am I growing? Lumalago ba yung pananampalataya ko sa'yo? Is it really, am I growing in my walk with you? And so, one businessman was saying, Pastor, when I was a Christian, I, and then there's a board meeting or a mancom meeting, I easily get anxious, especially when targets are not reached. And because of my anxiety and lack of patience, I cannot help but vent it out to, to my staff. That sometimes, I, I, not sometimes, most of the time, he raises his voice and discourages the staff. But when he became a Christian, he was saying, praise God, there was just that peace and faith and anxiety no longer overwhelms him that even sometimes targets are not reached. Parang sinasabi niya, there's more faith and trust in God that I don't have to vent it out to my staff because I know God is in control. And now in the, when I face tomorrow or, we, or a week, the, the coming week, there's that just strong trust in God knowing God will take care of things. That brought peace in his life and no longer berates his staff. I just share those examples to us to be able to ask ourselves, how are you in terms of bearing fruit in every good work? Some of you, good work also may mean involvement in church. Helping out others. Being a blessing to others. Before, it may be you were a pessimistic person, cynical doesn't trust the church. You think the church is all of just about getting your money. But when now the Lord blesses you, you know, I want to honor God through my finances. Maybe that's you. We ourselves with people. We've had traumatic, you know, naman yung word na trauma. Sometimes it's overrated. Okay, edit. But sometimes we use trauma in any situation. Nadapa ka, na trauma ka. Na offend ka, na trauma ka. How about those people who are really traumatized, right? So, anyway. I'm just saying, maybe if you had a situation, you don't trust people. You don't want to open your life to others because of offense or hurts. But bearing fruit means to you is that 
you know, I am willing to take a step of faith and give it a try to connect with other people, especially with other believers, to help me grow in my walk with God. Maybe that's you. So ask yourself while I'm talking now, how am I bearing fruit in every good work? That's the second barometer, gauge, to be able to know if I am growing as a Christian. The third one is bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowing God more through the Word. Nagbabasa ba kayo ng Bible? I mean, let me ask you a question, a very theological and deep question. Are you reading the Bible? Yung mga iba nakastare lang sa akin. Ano po yun? <laughs> Hindi po ako mangangain. But I'm gonna ask. When was the last time you opened the Bible? Huh? Nakala ko, ah, oh, Bible pala yun. Araw-araw pala. <laughs> Every day. When was the last time, if you're a believer, it's a question. When was the last time you opened and read the Bible? To know Him more, in, in Colossians, it was also mentioned, it's through His Word. This is where we can know God more. So, my hope for us, 8 a.m., is that we just don't open the Bible. No, 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 no. Uh, let me paraphrase it. My hope for us, if you're a believer and a follower of Christ, download a Bible app. And start making it your discipline to read at least, hindi naman one sentence a day. One chapter a day. And then after reading one chapter a day, Pray. We need to make it a spiritual discipline that as a follower of Christ, each and every day, every day, I'm knowing God more. Okay? Now, you're not just downloading the Bible app, but I want also as a congregation here that you're willing to connect yourself with other believers, maybe we call it small groups, to help you grow in your walk with God. I'm busy, Pastor. Hindi lahat tayo busy eh. How many of you know busyness is a moving target? All of us are busy. Nasabihin mo ba, you missed lunch? I'm busy. What if you missed meals for seven days because you're busy? No, you're not. You make time for the important things. And so, I want us to download them because knowing God more it's a gauge that I'm growing as a follower of Christ. So is growth required from every believer? Yes. It is. It's a discipline. And we get to love His Word more. And then of course, this one in verse 11. Being strengthened with all what? According to His glorious might, for, you have to take note of the prepositions, right? For prepositions. For all endurance and... So the reason why you're strengthened with power in this prayer item, for endurance and... When do you use the word endurance? When you are... It's the word S. Suffering. See, si Brandel rin nagsabi rin kanina, di ba? Pastor Brandel. But all of us go through suffering. But whatever suffering we're going through, there, as a believer, there's endurance and patience. I'm able to persevere by the grace of God. Can I be honest to the young people? Sino ba young dito? Like, okay, I need to be more specific with the A. <laughs> Ready na mag na. Uh, with the A. I'm talking about Gen Z. Gen Z. Wala. Meron. Millennials. Ayan, millennials. Millennials, Gen Z. 
baby boomers, wag na mag- Malakas kayo eh. The prop as a substitute youth pastor now. I'm not I'm not turning down a generation. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not putting you down. Because I'm a youth pastor too. What I've noticed, even especially for the younger ones, not I'm not generalizing it. It's a low adversity quotient. For some reason, and maybe it's a gift, if it can be turned around, our children are very emotional, are very sensitive compared to our seniors. Sino mga seniors dito? I mean, seniors matitibay eh. Okay lang yan! Ready lang! Praise God! Kahit may problema sa pera, praise God! Pag pumunta sa meral ko, the Lord will provide! Wag mong putulan! Right, amen, mga seniors? Baby boomers, malakas talaga yan. Sanay sa gera yan eh. Right? You know what I'm talking about. But, and help us here, the older generation. We have to pray for the next generation. What I've noticed is a low adversity quotient. Low grades in school. I want to take my life. I'm not exaggerating. Cancelled in social media. It seems like their whole purpose and security in life is gone. And so we're trying to navigate that as church because we are a church that values the next generation, right? So we want to disciple them and uphold them in prayer, believing that at the end of the day, being strengthened with all power, the adversity quotient can increase. I was talking to someone the other day who was like that. It's like the who is... Her whole world is falling apart just because of an offense. Now, I'm not gaslighting or whatever. I'm just saying, and I was encouraging her, come on. I mean, you've got to stand up and continue to fight for Jesus. In other words, come on. I want you to have a bigger perspective. And that's what Apostle Paul is saying. Because if I'm growing as a Christian... I am strengthened with God's power so that I can endure and persevere and be patient with whatever crisis I'm going through. There will be suffering in this world. But how many of you know by the grace of God, we can stand firm. We can be steadfast. And I'm prophesying to the next generation here. Some of you are here, five people. Okay, okay na yun. Five millennials, whatever. Or five Gen Z and those people are watching online. Let me prophesy and declare this truth. You will be strengthened with power so that when crisis comes, you will not shrink, but you will stand up for Jesus. You will be firm. You will be steadfast. Adversity quotient, that's what the science tells us, will increase. And it increases when we continue to rely on God's power. Social media is will not dictate your destiny. Followers and likes in TikTok <sighs> don't make up your identity. Let me tell you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, God said. Before you were born, I set you apart. Your identity, mo kapatid, is not based on people's accolades and attention and likes. Let me tell you, when Jesus died on the cross for you, He's thinking about you. Your identity is based on His love for you, not on the love of people in social media. So when you go through tough times, hindi po ako galit, I'm smiling. So when you go through, tanggalin po yung kilay. When you go through tough times, all of us now, may we be strengthened with God's power so that we will endure and be patient even in the midst of suffering. Amen? That's how you grow as a Christian. And then next one is the power to endure. And then the next, lastly, giving thanks to? 
who has qualified you. Ayan yung identity mo. That's your identity. Who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Jesus has delivered us from the domain of and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So when, what this verse is telling us that when you become a Christian, it's not just receiving a golden ticket to heaven. When you become, when you become a Christian, the Lord shifts your identity, transfers you from kingdom of hell. How many of you are, when you're not a Christian, you're a if you're not a Christian, you're a resident of hell. I'm serious. But when the Lord saved us, He plucked us out from there, wala ka nang titulo sa hell. He brings you into His kingdom of light. You were influenced by sin and by the devil, but now you're influenced by God when you become a Christian because of what Christ has done. And it says here, the kingdom of who? Who's the son? So, kingdom of not, Pastor Paulo. The kingdom of not a mega church pastor. The kingdom of Jesus. You know, in a, hindi kasi sanay tayo sa monarchy, no? We are in a uh, republic or democratic nation. So, sanay tayo sa president, vice president. But in the kingdom, in a monarchy state of society, a king is the leader. And every citizen that live, lives in that kingdom gives their allegiance to the king. And so when you're a Christian, you're giving your allegiance and loyalty to, to Jesus. So yung sinasabi natin, this is my body, this is my right. No, it's not. It's God's body. I'm not living. I want to live for myself, sis. No, I deserve to be happy. Oh, really? That's the worldly mindset. But when you become a Christian, you're not own, you don't own yourself anymore. God owns you. And my allegiance and loyalty is to God. That should be the greater motivation of obeying Him. Because you saw Pastor, that's why. No, that's not what, because of what I said. I'm just reminding all of us. But the greater motivation of obeying God is because my allegiance is to King Jesus. in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Kaya Jesus period. Because your allegiance and loyalty is not even to victory. Ultimately, your allegiance and loyalty is to Jesus. We're honoring the name of Jesus here. So as you're growing as a Christian, you're thankful to God for saving you. You know, last week, before Bishop Ferdi went home to be with the Lord. Sunday night yun eh. Um, I realized he also preached last Sunday morning in one of our congregations in Ortigas. He still preached. And his closing prayer, naka-video, napanood ko sa Facebook, his closing prayer was that being thankful to God for saving all of us, especially saving him. And then he said, today, this year, is my 40th year of being a Christian. Can you imagine that? 40th year of being a Christian. I've been a Christian longer than the years of me not being a Christian. And then he ended his preaching. I know it was Resurrection Sunday. And he ended his preaching just by being thankful to God for saving him. Little did I know that that day, the Lord will truly get him. And now he's in his wonderful presence of God. But he said that 40 years. Wow, thank you, Lord. And then when he, actually what happened pala, that Sunday night, I'm going to end here. He even visited someone in the hospital. Few hours, I would assume, few hours before the Lord took him. He even visited someone in the hospital in the Gupan to pray for someone. Think about that. Busy and productive. <laughs> Preached, thankful to God for saving him. 40 years. And then that night, he visited someone in the hospital to pray. And then after that, he 
had a heart attack, unfortunately, in one of the gas stations in Dagupan. The gas boy discovered him, brought him to the same hospital where he came from. It was sudden. But I can't help but think of that preaching. He just said, wow, thank you, Lord, for saving me and I've been serving you for 40 years. And he was telling that congregation. And I want us to be thankful to God. How many of you are thankful to God for saving you? Let's all stand. And our response, listen, is can you put that again? Um, that title, that series cover. Our response, because of all the things that the Lord has done to us, is Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. That's why there's period. It starts with Jesus. It ends with Jesus. And I pray for myself, for all of us, ATM family, we live for this King, Jesus. Amen? Bow down your hands with me and let's pray. Father God, I pray for everybody. Parang out of the four points that I shared, I want to pray for two, for those two. Number one is if you're going through suffering and crisis now, and you need the power and the strength of God to endure and patiently persevere. Just lift your hands today. I want to pray for us. God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters today who are going through some crisis. All our crises here are momentary. They're nothing compared to the wonderful, glorious, eternal destiny that you have for us. May you strengthen all of us with your power and might. Even for the young people, I'm serious that the young people will be steadfast and firm whatever crisis and suffering they're going through today. They're not going to shrink back. That we're going to stand up and be firm because at the end of the day, all things work together for the good of those who love you. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn shining ever brighter till the full light of day. So I pray for the ATM. Strength will rise, Jesus. Strength will rise for my ATM congregation. Because this is a sign of growth that when we are your followers, we're steadfast and firm in every crisis we go through. Put your hands down. And if you're here today, you want to bear fruit in every good work. Just like Dendu who overcame addiction in his life, who overcame saying bad words and curses. Now it's all about Jesus and God. If we want to bear fruit in every good work. Just lift. Can we, oh, in fact, let's all lift our hands because we want to bear fruit in every good work. Lord, this coming week, we will bear fruit in every good work. As a businessman, as a student, as a staff, as an employee, as a, as a supervisor, as a manager, as a housewife, as a homemaker. In everything we do this week, Lord, may we bear fruit in every good work. This is for your glory and for your honor. God, nothing will stop our growth. We will read our Bibles more. We will download the Bible app. And we'll start falling in love with your word. A lot of us will open our lives to you. Willing to be connected and make friends here in church. To be influenced in a godly way. Lord, I pray that nothing will hinder our growth, God. Because at the end of the day, you would be the center of our lives. That's our prayer, Lord. Lord, I pray that this preaching will be planted in our hearts. Your word will be planted in our hearts. And give us wisdom and understanding. How, how does that translate in our daily living? Protect us as we go. May we have a good Sunday today with family and friends. Refresh your people, Lord. Pray for your mercy and your grace to be upon us throughout this week. May we be a blessing to people, Lord. A salt and light to the earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this ends our service. God bless you. If you need prayers, we'll be here to pray for you. See you next Sunday.